Well, hello there. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, it is Saturday, June the 17th. I hope you're well, whether you're here live, whether you're here on the replay. Welcome. Appreciate you being here and I hope you're well. I hope that your day is filled with joy, even if everything doesn't go as planned. So if you're here live, go ahead and first of all, let me know you can hear me okay, so that this stream is not a total loss. <laughs> and um, also let me know where you're coming from. And if you have any fragrance sprayed on that you're enjoying, let me know what it is. Go ahead and file in everyone. Poisson is saying, show us the cat. <laughs> He's referring to my, uh, well, they're referring to my last video. Um, where Penny was in the background the whole time, just living her best life. Um, let's see here. Kevin's coming in from Lakeland, Florida. Good to see you. Thomas. Welcome. Edwin, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but welcome. NYC, I was just there. That's where I got this t-shirt. Kyler, no sin of the day. That's all right. You know, Kyler, that's actually interesting you say that because um, Gerard who we see here all the time. He may join us later today in this stream. Uh, made an interesting comment on my last video, which was all about performance, talking about the importance of giving your nose a break. It's so easy to forget that. You know, maybe give yourself a few days to a week every now and then from not wearing any fragrances, and you'll be amazed at how fragrances smell when you come back. They have more of a robustness to them and you know maybe even ones that you were having trouble detecting throughout the day you might actually smell them for longer no guarantees of course but something to consider so gerard if you're here thanks for that little tip that reminder kevin thank you good to see phoenix thank you 40 knots all right good stuff lira that's a beautiful scent People, those of you who are not sure about Zaharoff Coco Loco performance, you don't need to hear from me. There's your field test right there. <laughs> Derek is still smelling it from last night. Hey, Sarah. Hibiscus Palm. I don't know that one. I actually just recently got my nose on, gosh, Hibiscus Mahajad. Is that what it's called? It's been getting a lot of buzz lately. When I was in New York, I went to Scent Bar and tried it. and like this stuff is beautiful i have a little splash sample behind me somewhere all right devin well congratulations on seven years both of those are great choices we can't go wrong i'd go with the one that she likes the most perhaps but both are great hmm sunshine good stuff those of you who are new to a stream, what we do here for the first 10 minutes or so as I just interact with you guys, take your questions, and then we get into business. So if you find yourself impatient, you know why, but you don't have to wait long. Lomidial Cologne, love it. Abdullah from Kuwait, welcome. Hey, Anthony. All right, man, I am so behind on zoologists. I have not smelled their fragrances in a in quite some time. Um, years, so I have a lot to catch up on there. Uh, Denmark, hey, Casper, classic Fahrenheit. All right, Stuart from London, wood for greatness. He says it's all right. <laughs> I feel the same way. It's all right. West Virginia, Hawass, yes. The cat is here. Penny just showed up. 
I'm not going to move the camera because then I have to move it back. But she's sitting over here, kind of just hanging out. So we'll see if she decides to come closer. Let's see. All right. Hmm. Lubbock. That's right, Sarah. Hold on. What is going on here? I had a little glitch here. Uh, just like giving yourself a break from caffeine. Yeah, it's super important. Brioni Essential. Man, I love, I'm loving Brioni lately. And you'll see, obviously, in the thumbnail. Essential Parfum Mon Vetiver. You know, I have a sample of that. I think I've tried it, but I can't remember. I need to revisit that. But I remember enjoying it. Hey, Asker, what scent am I wearing today? I'm not wearing anything officially. Um, I have something on my hand here that I will talk about shortly. But I'll put on something later on. In fact, I have kind of a big day today. Um, I, <clears throat> there is the first ever all black rodeo happening, at least in Oregon, the first ever black rodeo in Oregon is happening today here in Portland. I have been asked to play the national anthem. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Grace will be there and she'll get some video and maybe I'll share that with you guys later. Uh, so I'll put on something special for that. Not sure what it'll be yet. Le Mal, Le Parfum Good or Not. I still haven't tried it yet. Believe it or not. I've almost gotten it several times and it's fallen through. So I just haven't. What's up, Frag Dude? What is the next fragrance from Black Cliff? They actually have sent over a few other fragrances. I did not even know. I just got an email saying, you have a package coming. And I'm like, Okay. Uh, and they sent like maybe three. So we'll see how they are. Honestly, it's a little overwhelming. I'm like, okay, didn't know this was happening, but it's coming. Um, mm -hmm. They have been. Yes, I'm noticing like, man, they are, they are just pumping them out <laughs> without hesitation. Noir Extreme Parfum from Bulgaria. Hello. Um, I tried it in stores actually for the first time, maybe like three weeks ago. I was walking around Nordstrom. I saw it, sprayed it. I liked it. I put it on paper. I did like it. It reminded me of the original, but a little bit just more interesting, maybe a little bit darker. I liked it because I like the original Nor Extreme. So I want to revisit the Parfum. Maybe I'll come back around to it as we get close to fall. Jazz Club, all right. Folsom, man, I haven't been there in a long time. Good stuff. Hey, Bill. Thank you, Vlad. Really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Comments goes restricted on your videos after a while. I'm not sure what that means exactly. I um, wanted to know what you think about Aqua de Parma's Signature of the Sun collection. Haven't tried it, Rizzle. Um, have not tried. I've been out of date on them as well in terms of their newer stuff. I've tried a lot of their stuff, but it's been a few years since I've tried their stuff. What's up, Dash? Good to see you out there in NYC. Plum Japanese. I love Plum Japanese. I have a bottle. I'm really grateful to have a bottle because it's hard to find. Lovely scent. Coco Loco, it's making the rounds, guys. Making the rounds. We've got maybe 30 more seconds, and then we'll get into it. Subclimatic, good to see you. Ooh, for greatness, smell like a rich, mature man. Sure, I can see that. Sure, I'll probably share it, David. Thank you. Mmm, hello, darkness. That one is... It's coming, so I will be trying that one soon. I will heed your warning. <laughs> okay, everyone. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. 
um, we're going to get started. So this video is really simple. Um, I'm going to start doing this every month. I did it last month, but it wasn't a live stream. I think I did it as a short. Uh, but we're doing it as a live stream this time. And I only did three fragrances in that short because, you know, you only have a minute. So I wanted to expand a little bit. We're talking about some of my favorite fragrances that I have picked up slash experienced this month in June. Obviously, June is not over yet, but it is mostly over. We're more than halfway through the month. And I don't expect to receive a whole lot more before the month's end. Like I just said, I am getting three more from Black Cliff, but um, I'm not going to. I just wanted to do this today. I didn't feel like waiting. Um, I actually had another idea for a live stream that I was going to do today, but it was just requiring a little bit more preparation than I had time for. And that is I was going to select 10 of my favorite perfumers and roughly two to three fragrances that I have from each one of them. And it was just tough to select 10. I was going through like the Fragrantica's entire list and then finding the ones that I know or that stand out to me, clicking on them, looking at their entire catalog, seeing what I have from them. It was just taking some time. I think I made it through the Fs. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. I'll maybe try to circle back on that next week because it's a fun idea. I just don't know if many people actually want to watch that. Uh, people want to know what's going to smell amazing and get the compliments. They don't really care who made their fragrance, but I think you guys do. Anyway, uh, thank you, Brandon. Yeah, I'm honored. And this is such a unprecedented event, and I'm just really honored to be a part of it. So, okay, let's jump right in. First up here, we have an honorable mention. And let me make sure. Yeah, the reason why this is an honorable mention is because some people would claim that there is a conflict of interest here. People always say, oh, I can't trust you when you talk about this brand because you have your own fragrance from them. I get it. But those people don't know my content and they don't really know me as a reviewer. So I understand. But if you know me as a reviewer, you know that I am real 101% of the time. I'm going to talk about real quick here, Zaharoff Coco Loco. Now, to be honest with you, man, why is my, there we go. It was like lagging. To be honest with you, I have only worn this fragrance one time. Grace has worn this maybe three or maybe about three times now. She's gotten more out of uh, wear out of it than I have lately. But this is a beautiful scent. It is so luscious. For those of you who tried citrine and, you know, for whatever reason it left you, you know, left some to be desired for you. This is the citrine DNA, but richer, more complex, perhaps more robust and, you know, I guess more long lasting, which I guess people complained about with citrine. Citrine is lovely and it works perfectly for its function, which is hot summer day out when you want to just have a lightness, a cleanliness, something uplifting and fun that doesn't have to last all day long. And this is essentially like the nighttime version of it, if you will. And this is more based around Brazilian carnival. And that's where all this design comes from. I've seen some people say, oh, the design is so busy. I'm like, guys, this is it's cultural inspiration. This literally is a mask. It's a Brazilian mask. Uh, that is often used for carnival. And then on the back here, this is actually some kind of, I don't remember, it's like a tiling from the floor somewhere in Rio. I don't remember exactly what location, uh, which is just, again, details. George is all about details. So this is coconutty, citrusy, rich, kind of creamy, sweet, bright, beautiful. That's all we'll say about it for now. Uh, more to come on it later on. Okay. Bill, thank you so much. That's really, really kind of you. Okay, first up into the real eight here to get started. Um, this is one that I have experienced for some years now, but I only just got a bottle of it. And because I only just got a bottle of it, I've been recently kind of revisiting it 
and remembering how beautiful it is because I honestly kind of underestimated it for some time. This is a beautiful, relaxing summer fragrance from Nishane. It's Wulong Cha. I don't typically get the 100 milliliter bottle, but we have the 100 milliliter bottle here. All my others are 50 milliliters. And I have 130, which is Unu Tamam, which only comes in uh, the 30 mil. But yeah, this is like a bright, tart, mouthwatering bergamot. Almost lemony in a way, mixed with tea, almost like an Earl Grey feel or something like that. A little floral, perhaps, but mostly just rounding it out, making it very smooth, kind of taking the edge off the citrus. It's just smooth. It smells like white and light green and yellow. It's a little herbal. It's very natural. It's very beautiful. Wow. It is so beautiful. Sir Siaj is saying probably the best opening of a fresh scent he's ever come across. If you're talking about Wulong Cha, yeah, I would say the dry down is, I like the dry down a lot. It's maybe not as interesting as the opening because um, citrus, if it is a citrus forward scent, then that is what's going to have the most interest. But as it dries, then you're left with whatever's there, musk and maybe some woods. And that's not interesting. It's nice, but not interesting. I love your review method and tactics. I found it funny that someone was offended that you are trying to get away from solely longevity as a quality to design. <laughs> I find it funny every time. Um, yes, I find it funny every time. And obviously it's a trigger. If people are upset by something I say, by an opinion, that means they are triggered by it, which means that they feel that their point of view is being attacked or being compromised. However, if you are steadfast and confident in yourself and what you believe, then you have no reason to get upset at what someone else says, especially when it has nothing to do with you. Just do your thing and just say, OK, that's how you feel this is how I feel. Moving on. If emotions get involved, then I think you have some reflecting to do. Anyway, here we go. That was Oolong Cha. Next up here. This is from a brand that I've been seeing some talk about here and there. And uh, I was hearing good things. So they reached out. They sent over a few bottles. Well, they sent a discovery set. I wanted to make sure I liked the fragrances before I got any bottles from them. They sent a discovery set. Wow, this thing is diffusing in the air already. I tried all of them. Most of them were okay. They were kind of designer-ish to me, but a few of them actually stood out as something special. Not necessarily unique, but special. From Sphinx Perfumes, this is what they call Sphinx Elixir. This is probably my favorite from the house so far. Man, what is up with this picture? It gets all like, uh, like... I don't know. Sorry about that, guys. I really need a new webcam solution. I'm using the iPhone with the Mac. They, what do they call it? Like, I don't remember what they call it now. They have some special little name because Apple names everything, every feature. Um, but it's not perfect because I guess nothing is. Anyway, this, to me, this comes off as like an, an incense oud rose. There's a sweet, rich, almost jammy rose quality to it, almost fruity, uh, but with, with this kind of hazy, dusty, smoky incense that is cooling and fresh, not necessarily like fiery or hot. Uh, maybe a little bit of, again, oud in there. It's really elegant, very elegant, very robust. If you're looking for longevity, they actually kind of guarantee longevity on their website, which I'm, a, as I said in my video yesterday, I think it's a little tacky sometimes to be like, oh yes, unlike other perfumes, ours will last. And I'm like, okay, we don't have, we can't make any guarantees here. But if that is, you know, the case across the board and all of your testing, then sure, I'll stand by the facts, you know, not just by uh, theorizing and speculation and whatever. But anyway, nonetheless, 
this is a beautiful scent. More to come. I'm still getting to know it a little bit, uh, but more to come on this. Have any of you guys tried this brand, Sphinx? The blue sky filter is off today, <laughs> Gerard. Yeah, I don't know why. Something's wrong with it. I thought it would turn on, but anyway. Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Have I tried Hobby Rouge, Rouge Privé? Not yet, but I certainly want to. What is... What is this? You, there's a couple of you guys... Am I missing something? Is this some new meme? Or is this spam? What is this? Can any of you guys enlighten me on these types of comments? Okay. Uh, let's see here. I want to make sure I keep all my test strips in order. The emojis aren't showing up. <laughs> okay. For some reason, it's coming up as like code. It literally says hand, pink, waving, face, blue, smiling. But I can see other emojis. I see Kyler had here with the thumbs up and the fire. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, on Apple products, they can come off as text. So are these like some exclusive emojis? It's interesting. I've never had, I've never seen this before. That's why I'm, I'm just like very confused. Okay, let's move on. This next fragrance is the one on the thumbnail. Man. Beautiful simplicity. YouTube ones. Okay, so that's why. Because I am looking at StreamYard right now. And I guess it's not crossing over. Thank you guys for the uh, clarification. Brioni Eclat. Wow. This is my second Brioni. I have EDP Intense. I really enjoy it. This is going to be so good for the summertime. This is so classy. Now, it is light. So for those of you that are just completely averse to lighter fragrances, you're going to be averse to this. As I always say, I do not believe that everything has to be beast mode because it's like basically wearing a wool sweater or a tuxedo for every event. Sometimes a t-shirt will do. You know what I mean? If you need a fragrance to last 12 hours, then don't wear a fragrance that you know only lasts five. Right? Fragrance for the job, right? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so this smells like it's kind of it's grapefruit forward. I get a, a tart, bright grapefruit that is not overly authentic. And I mean that in the best way. It doesn't literally smell like you opened up a grapefruit like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever or something like that. Or even like Terre d'Hermes Eau Gervais. It's not like that type of fresh like grapefruit. It's just like the zest from it but it is made a little spicy and there is a beautiful um kind of like woody muskiness enveloping the scent kind of the way that it looks here like this is the perfect presentation for this scent it has this kind of fuzzy woody fresh citrusy feel to it and on my skin it dries a little familiar i can't place it it does remind me like 70% of something. Nonetheless, it smells wonderful. It uh, Again, it's a little lighter. It's going to be a little bit more of a sophisticated scent. So it's not screaming. It's not going to just grab everyone around you. I wear this more um, in the daytime with a little bit of heat. So that helps it radiate a little bit more. And when I want to have a little bit more of a classy vibe, it's just lovely. So... That is Brioni Eclat. More to come on that. I know this is my first time talking about it, so just an introduction. And more, yeah, more to come later on. Let's see here. 
What is this, Gerard? We can predict Justin's opinion on meander by Boundless instead. I haven't tried meander, um, but I do like Boundless. But <laughs> I need to try meander, Gerard. I do plan on trying it at some point somehow. Hey, Malcolm, try good Wood of God from Sphinx. Um, I think I have tried the sample. I don't remember being all that impressed, but I do remember liking it. But I need to uh, revisit that. Ideal Sport is nice, but I prefer the cologne. I'm seeing Ross. Oh, there he is. What's up, man? Welcome. What about New Zahara for lease? I just talked about it, you know, maybe uh, 15 minutes ago. So uh, if you want to go back to the replay, I talked about Coco Loco. Uh, so you just missed it, Mo. Sorry about that. Let's keep it moving. All right. Next up, we just uh, we have another great summer fragrance, one that's going to be perfectly refreshing. I'm going to respray it here for the upcoming heat, unlike today. But I like days like this. I'm not complaining. Very, very bright bergamot. Super bright from the brand that maybe one day I will say this with confidence. Farmacia Esses Annunziata. They're from Florence, Italy. They call this Bergamundi. I have one other fragrance from them that I've, I've talked about called Whiskey Nobile. That one's lovely, very unique. This is not all that unique because citrus, it's hard to make citrus smell unique, especially when it's forward here. And it is lots of bergamot, very bright. I do get this kind of citrus blossom feel. I don't know which one it is. It could be orange blossom, but no, it's not really like a powdery feel. It's not really overly floral, but there is a thickness to the citrus presence. It's not just juicy citrus fruit. There is some thickness. There's some richness here, but it's kind of... <sighs> How do I describe this? I'll have to come up with the words later as I get to know it better. Again, still pretty new. Just got it this month. I will say it's pretty simple. Um, not real complex. It's not really going to change a lot on the skin. It's not going to even smell all that complex when you first spray it. Kind of what you get is what you get. But if you like a very particular profile, like basically a white t-shirt. That's kind of how I consider this. It is versatile. It is not really special, but functional, pleasant, familiar. But, you know, still not, at least in this case, not run of the mill. So, the, yeah, this is kind of like a white t-shirt of fragrances, but it's really nice. Once again, it's called Bergamundi. And everything is down in the description, by the way. If you're not catching everything I'm saying, all the fragrances are down there. There's links if you like to click links. And some of the links are affiliate links if you do want to support the channel at no extra cost to you. All right, let's keep it moving. Moving forward here. Next up, let's talk about this one. This one, I'm surprised is here in this video. Um, this is the one that's on my hand right now. I've been spending a couple days with it. And I'll be honest, when I first sprayed it on my hand, I did not even bring it up to my nose. And it literally attacked my nose and it like stung and it made me sneeze like crazy. And I was unhappy. I'm like, I, I knew I wouldn't like this fragrance because I came in with a preconception. And I'll be honest, I still kind of have that preconception. I'm holding on to it. But... I do have to admit that there's a part of me inside somewhere that likes this scent. I find it pleasant, even though conceptually I'm kind of mad at it, but I do like it. I'm going to get to know it more before it gets too hot. And I will talk about it at some point from Emir, which is a clone brand. Yes. You guys are like a clone. This was sent to me by fragrance by, they really insisted. I try this fragrance. I actually kind of fought them about it. This is called Vu Elegante. 
I kind of fought them about it. I'm like, I don't really do clones. I don't really want to try this. And they said, please try it. We think you'll like it. People are digging it. Give it a shot. And I said, all right. They sent it over. This is a Zerzhov Naxos clone. How'd they do? Well, I can say that the scent does smell like Naxos. I'm reminded of Naxos for sure. Um, the quality is okay. Actually better than I expected. First spray, not so much. First spray is, is it really kind of shows its, its cost, I think. But the, uh, the quality is decent. Again, better than I thought. The complexity as it relates to Naxos doesn't hold a flame. This comes off as just this melded together version. It's like they took Naxos and they kind of crumpled it up a little bit. <laughs> I know it sounds weird. It's all here, but it doesn't just like float and it doesn't have the same nuance, which is just what comes with, you know, lesser grade um, materials. But all in all, it comes together to smell really nice, especially in the air. In the air, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm getting the Naxos vibe. Up close, you know, the frag head in me, the one that likes to dissect fragrances, the one that is really about the, the composition and the artistry is unhappy. That part of me is like, well, the nuance isn't here and blah, blah, blah. So for me, it's like, it doesn't move me. But if I'm just going to wear it out in the world, knowing that it's going to smell great in the air and it's going to smell a little special, then it's good for that. So more to come on this. This is an incredibly cheap fragrance and it smells okay. So more to come. Let me know if you guys have tried this. I know it was making the rounds, I don't know, maybe months ago. So I'm late to the game on it, but not bad. Jury's still out, but we'll see. Okay. Paul says clones are theft. Yes, Paul, I totally understand. I am 100% conflicted about clones. I don't actually wear them myself. I have a few, but if I'm going to reach for a fragrance during the day, it's not going to be a clone. Uh, more often than not, unless the clone is somehow better than the original, and that is very subjective. Um, but for instance, there's some, there's a few instances where I'm like, you know what? I can get down with this. Let me give you my only two instances that I can think of right now where I am okay with clones. Number one is for a discontinued fragrance. I have a clone by Parfums Vintage of Gucci Pour Homme 2. And it's called Imbu. Gucci Pour Homme 2 is not worth the money, but Imbu basically just like it, maybe even a little bit more refined, a little smoother, a little bit stronger if you're looking for that. In that case, I'm like, I'm happy with that. That's fine. You can't otherwise get that fragrance. They're not really taking any market share from Gucci because Gucci is not even taking it for themselves. Um, not that they need that because they're a huge designer house and they're not losing any money uh, by discontinuing a fragrance. The second reason the second way I, I can get down with a clone is if the original claims to be a luxury niche fragrance that's actually, well, it's not niche. Forgive me. This, I'm thinking of Lemincite from Louis Vuitton. Lemincite is a very pleasant fragrance. However, it does not smell 200 plus dollars. There's nothing special about it. It's really nice. It has that longevity that people might want, but it's not special. This It doesn't smell like a luxury fragrance to me. So in that case, I have from Dossier, their clone of it. It smells identical. It smell, And it costs like 40 bucks. And honestly, the Lamentate kind of smells like it costs that much to me. So in that way, I can get down with it. Those are the only two ways. I'm not really looking to just get a cheaper alternative of a fragrance because if if the original's out there and it's of great quality then i'm gonna go for that that's just how i am so i don't have naxos i've never owned it i've had samples over in the past and i've thought about getting it but i've never been moved enough to quite get it so 
I kind of accepted this as a bit of a uh, a test for myself. I'm like, okay, I haven't smelled Naxos in like five years. I've been wishy-washy about getting it. Let me go ahead and accept this 30 something dollar bottle and see how I feel about the DNA all over again. So we'll see. Maybe I'll come back around in Axos, but I have to give this a full wearing and just, you know, see how it moves me. Hope that makes sense. That was a very long explanation. So I do apologize, but thank you for uh, your patience. And thanks for sharing, Paul. All right. Moving on. We've got a few more. Just three more, and then I'll let you be on your way here. So this fragrance, um, I did feature this brand in a recent video uh, talking about like my my hidden gems, the fragrances I've been sitting on and not sharing with you guys. And I've had samples. I've got the discovery set from this brand months ago. So I've been dealing with this brand for a little while, getting to know their fragrances. But I only just got this bottle earlier this month. And uh it's a lovely scent. It's going to be more for the fall and winter, um, but it's good stuff, guys. I'm going to give it a spray. Mm. Yeah. Excuse me. This is coming from Adamo perfume. This is called Numero Two. This is from this particular collection. Excuse me. Wow. Gas is a weird thing. Uh, this was perfumed by Christian Provenzano. And this guy, he's a busy guy. He's everywhere. So they got him to perfume this whole collection. There are three fragrances here. This is gorgeous. I'm getting it in the air right now. Now, when I first sprayed this, I smelled like kind of fresh, spicy cardamom. <clears throat> and that's what I think is making me sneeze. There's a spicy element here that is like tickling the crap out of my nose right now but it smells amazing. There's this kind of ambery, sweet warmth to it. Um, maybe almost a leathery feel. Dark and elegant. Um, I'll be honest, it's not the most unique in terms of, I mean, it doesn't smell exactly like a lot of other things, but I have at least one other fragrance that is not really known that well that this reminds me of and i can easily say it's not a clone because it would make no sense to clone this fragrance by lark perfumes called um argentium these are kind of in that vein i think this is just kind of a popular style of fragrance within the past few years but um this actually features i'm going to read the notes here black pepper cashmere uh no bergamot blood orange and saffron are the top notes the saffron is what's giving me the spice um heart notes as well black pepper give me that spice with cashmere and base notes of sandalwood patchouli and musk to be honest the notes don't really make sense to me the note breakdown i don't really smell all of this um i get this pretty overtly like warm sweet vanillic ambery woodiness but it must be this. I can see how some of them can fit into that. But the overall profile, this is not what I would have guessed was in this fragrance. But this is lovely stuff. I've talked about it enough. I will talk about it again. There's a link down in the description. If you use the code, I think it's just my name, Justin. Um, they're offering you guys a free discovery set. You just pay the cost of shipping. So check them out if you're interested. More on Adamo. Yeah. And Gerard, these bottles are pretty wild. Really, really cool design. Okay, we got two more. Two more. Which one to do next? We'll do this one next. This stuff, oh man, this is a brand new release. Again, I got it just earlier this month. And this house is known to satisfy the people who require beast mode all the time. If you require beast mode every day of the week for every occasion, this is your brand. This is Unique Luxury. This is their newest called Mangonificent. Oh, man. Gosh. Wow. This is... It is kind of what it sounds like. It's juicy mango. 
juicy, pretty realistic mango. It is kind of artificially ripe, if that makes sense. Like, um, it's like if they took away any bit of edge, any bit of like non sweetness that might be present in the taste of a ripe mango, it's like the perfect mango in a bottle. And it's like, that's not always easy to come by. But nonetheless, it smells delicious. There seems to be this like dripping honey quality to it. There is this kind of rich floral quality to it. I think some people might consider this a little feminine, but I think it's perfectly unisex. And again, like all their other fragrances, very strong. Kylo Ren Boz is not a fan of the term. I couldn't care uh, less about the term nor what it means. But nonetheless, if you're looking for it, this is strong stuff. And if you want like a, a summer fragrance that you can wear in the night, well, day or night, honestly, day or night, I might spray less of this under the sun because it's really, really thick. Um, but it's kind of fun. But there is a bit of a central quality to it. It's not all that like happy beachy tropical. Yes, it is. But there is a rich thickness here that has this alluring feel. It's, it's lovely, but it is pr uh, pretty specific. So if you don't know if you just love mango, then this may not be the one, but sample it first either way. Mangonificent. The name is the name is functional, the name is effective. It's maybe a little corny, but it's not bad, not the worst. Okay. Final fragrance. This one, I can't say this one is like super exciting. Maybe not to you guys, but I am just really, really thrilled to have this because this is a fragrance I had years ago. I actually had kind of an older bottle of it. And for whatever reason, I sold that bottle along with many others. And um, I missed it. And that's how I know, you know what? I actually really did enjoy this fragrance. When I get rid of it and I miss it, and that does not happen often because I've gotten rid of a lot of fragrances. I have hundreds of bottles right now, and I've gotten rid of hundreds of bottles in the past several years. So that should tell you I've had a lot of fragrances, and most of them I have not gotten back. A few I have, and this is one of them. A good friend of mine, I was thinking about this fragrance randomly, and then not long after that, a good friend of mine reached out and said, hey, I just blind bought this at a at a Neiman's and I wish I hadn't bought it. Do you know who might want to buy it? He paid full retail for it, as you can imagine. And I'm like, oh, Lord. It's like, well, actually, I would buy it from you. Um, this is how much it typically goes for on the discount website. He's like, that's fine. I just need to get rid of it. So I bought it from him. Again, maybe not many of you will care about this, but I love this stuff. This is Creed Original Veteran. I'm so happy to have this back for the summertime. This is one of the easiest to wear vetiver fragrances that doesn't smell overtly like vetiver. Like even though it is a vetiver forward scent, it's in the name. I almost wouldn't even call it a vetiver fragrance. It's more of like a clean, soapy, woody fragrance. Yeah, there's kind of a bright citrus. There is this maybe a floral quality, like a white floral in here, filling it out. And then there's this very clean, soapy, woody vetiver. And I get decent performance, believe it or not. I get a good seven, eight hours for being so clean and fresh. Uh, this is, is there a batch code on this? This is a newer bottle. I mean, you can tell by the cap. And again, he bought it from the store, so it's a newer stock. I couldn't tell you exactly what the batch is. I don't see the, well, I see the, the number, but they've changed their numbering. I didn't notice. I don't know what it means now. Um, it's, this is good. Again, not all that special. Definitely, you know, people compared to Mugler Cologne, which came out first. Um, uh, and they are definitely similar, whether or not Creed copied them. Jury's still out. We can't, uh, say for sure. There's no empirical evidence of that. Uh, Either way, in fact, I did a review. I just remembered I did a review um, 
comparing this to Moolah clone back when I had both of them. This was years ago. I think at the time I had a decant of original vetiver and I was comparing them. And I think I chose Moolah cologne because it was cheaper. But now I choose original vetiver, original vetiver because it smells better to me, has more depth, has a higher quality, more complexity without being a complex scent. And it just it actually performs better, too. So I prefer this, but nothing wrong with Muga Cologne. That's a great scent if you can get it. That is original vetiver. I see some of you guys are saying uh, you enjoyed it as well. Maybe not everyone does. Sir Siyash says it slaps. I agree. It slaps. That's fun. Will says he thinks Muga Cologne is a bit smoother. That's interesting. When I had Muga Cologne in my memory of wearing it, it has, at least comparatively so, this slightly acidic quality. There's something a little sharper and less smooth for me than original vetiver. Original vetiver comes off as a round, like a, a sphere of cleanliness to me. And Muga Cologne was has some rough edges to it, but still clean, but... Yeah, that's interesting. It's just these little things are different, guys. You got to use your own nose. Trust your nose. Uh, okay, any last minute questions that are just purely provocative and inspirational and revolutionary before we end this live stream? Let's see. Elijah, I'm so glad you're digging Kenzo. That stuff is good. Good. G-O-O-T. -G good. Um, what's up, Sally? David's asking, would like to hear what you think about Carlisle. I've talked about Carlisle several times on my channel in different ways. I used to not like it because it just didn't smell right on my skin. I've actually come around to it by wearing it in the right occasions. And I really, really dig it. Doron is saying, Bois Imperial, four compliments yesterday. Such a fantastic recommendation. I don't know if I'd call it a vetiver fragrance, but it's definitely woody. Um, yeah, but I'm glad it got some love. How do you feel about it? How would you rate it? Regardless of compliments. You're welcome, David. Yeah, get a sample, David, if you can. Don't blind buy it. H24 EDT or EDP, which would you wear right now? That's so funny. I actually wore both of them the other day. In fact, that particular day, I wore three fragrances that day, which was strange. Um, I think I sprayed on something super light. I sprayed on Green Lover uh, early that morning to go run something before I actually like had a chance to get myself ready for the day, just to have something on. And then I took a shower and I didn't know I did my workout, took my shower. And then I put on H24 EDT really enjoyed that for maybe, you know, five ish hours. And then I had an event that night. I sprayed on the EDP right on top. Uh, and it was perfect. So, um, you know, it really depends on the function for a hot day out. I'm going to go EDT. If it's going to be evening time or, you know, less warm weather than EDP is what I go with. Paris Monte Carlo has some beautiful citrus fragrances. I've only ever had decants. I don't know where those decants are now, but I do remember them having quite an impression on me for being very authentic. So I need to check them out. Do I still wear Rochas Lone? Picked it up in search of a juniper berry fragrance and hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I wear it from time to time, mostly as uh, just kind of a throw on scent, something to wear for just a few hours. Maybe it'll fade away later or I'll just easily scrub it off and put on something else. Um, yeah, I mean, I actually do like it. I find it to be a little bit. Um, what's the word? Exceptional for the price. I think I paid $17 for my bottle. I don't think it's that cheap anymore. And I liked it more than I thought I did. It had a smoothness that I was not expecting. A lot of blood orange. That juniper berry is definitely in full force. Um, I like it. It's it's a little sweet, 
maybe sweeter than you know it's it's a designer sense so they need that sweetness in there but i like it it's not amazing but i do like it and i spray it every now and then okay you said the vetiver jumps out on you cool um tardy to the party <laughs> i don't know why i've never heard that before i have some cafe cabanel on the way that's some good stuff cecile zarokian that's some delicious stuff that milky cinnamon kind of chai latte caramel coffee feel really beautiful that's the way to do it josh you've been sampling guys he enjoys it he's going to get a full bottle that is how you do it big homie josh thanks for showing us how to do it thanks for being an example overly powdery to me interesting okay i can see it being powdery if it's hot i actually haven't worn it a ton out in the heat um and i don't even think it would be my first choice because it does have this sweet quality to it and i can yeah i can see it being powdery but maybe you wore it not in the heat and it wasn't powdery um anything else guys before we end off um also guys there is a link down below for um z creators they're still available i know you don't really see me talking about them all that much i'm not trying to shove them down your throat but second soul is still available if you do want to check it out um i don't see it being available for too much longer because stock is waning so if you've been waiting your time is running out yeah dior Arm intense is definitely powdery blind bought code absolute wow one of the best designer vanillas interesting okay um i think i remember trying it but i don't remember how i felt about it I think Ross had me try it. I'm not sure now, but I do. I do remember trying it. Reflection Man is very elegant. Reflection Man is awesome. Um, I actually have kind of an older bottle, and it performs very strongly. Um, definitely worth sampling first. I've heard it. Maybe it's reformulated. I'm not sure. But honestly. Out of my bottle, I don't wear more than three sprays because it's a little too strong. So I think it works perfectly a little bit lighter. I can see why it would slide up a bit. Okay, guys, I think we're going to end it off here. I want to thank you all for joining me in this live stream. Once again, links to everything I talked about are in the description. If you want to check anything out, get some samples, whatever you want to do. And if you missed yesterday's video, honestly, I put a lot into that video, even though it's not all that long. And I felt really, really passionately about it. So if you haven't yet checked it out, I recommend it. Um, it's called Avoid This One Mistake to Elevate Your Fragrance Game. Very, very vague. But, you know, if you're too specific, sometimes people are like, OK, I'm not interested in that. But if, you know, you got to have a question to answer. So, yes, I liked that video a lot. And I don't say that often, but I recommend you guys check it out if you haven't and smell well be well treat people with kindness and respect as you would like to be treated and i will see you in the next video we're doing a special one tomorrow a new one in my ingredient series is coming tomorrow and that will be entertaining i think and informative take care everyone